chainsaw out. That's right. You can explain what that is. All right. So this is John Quarterman, Swanee Riverkeeper, with uh, I think this is the Fourth Walls webinar, and Phil Hubbard's going to tell us all about chainsaw cleanups, which I think is a thing that he started uh, some years ago. He'll explain that. Ch Phil has also led a bunch of uh, other outings for walls on numerous rivers. And he participates in even others. So um, I could say more, but I think he's going to explain everything. So let's stop share for a moment so you can see him. Okay. Hi there, Phil. So tell us about yourself and why you started all this stuff. Well, um, I got a kayak number of years ago and i was very ignorant because i never had a boat i was not much into water type things and etc and uh that's in uh, researching trying to learn more about the rivers i was attempting to paddle is how i discovered walls and uh, i researched the date and it was june 19th of 2016 uh, which was a father's day and my son and i uh, attempted to paddle from uh, North Valdosta Road down to uh, Troopville Landing. And I was so ignorant about the rivers at that time that I didn't even know Langdale Park existed nor had a ramp. So kind of led me to some other things there. But I lost count around 20 times that we had to take out to go over various deadfalls that were... Uh, along our path and it was quite involved and uh, we actually got a late start anyway that day and uh, barely made it to the ramp at um, Troopville before uh, before it got dark in fact we used a flashlight to guide up part of it so uh, anyway it led to uh, quite a uh, quite an adventure and as I got involved with the walls I always had the opinion that you know, it would be great to cut out some of those deadfalls so that it could be easily paddled because it's a neat little uh, trek to go on. And it seems like you're highly isolated whenever you're doing this trip, even though it's right at the edge of the city limits of Valdosta for the most part. And um, anyway, with time, we started... I don't know, like, what was it, maybe two years ago, I guess, John, we started doing our first cleanup, mm -hmm. and uh, we've um, had some success, and at various water levels, it's uh, we've trimmed up, spent a lot of time trimming the trees and cutting up the deadfalls and et cetera that have fallen along the way. Um, then, of course, the hurricane didn't help us out any. I think we had it in pretty good shape. Um, in 2022, um, when we had put in at, uh, at the railroad bridge and we had a lot of it downstream cleared up and we did a lot of work down around Troopville landing area and, uh, which all of that was the worst part. So, um, but anyway, with time and we've made a lot of progress in getting various things cleaned up and, uh, the river pretty well open with the exception of a few obstacles that come up exposed that have been covered by water. But uh, perhaps this summer when the river level drops, we can uh, get more involved and uh, get down to a wading water level and can clear out everything. So that this would be a neat little trip that anybody locally can do with a minimal amount of time and a minimal amount of uh, shuttling and hopefully no portage and make it a nice little trip. Um, the whole trip from uh, Langdale Park to um, um, Troopville Landing is roughly seven miles and then along halfway is Burtis Pizza and you can take out there on uh, Sugar Creek. So um, we've had some real good participation with various projects on this. Uh, the mayor's even helped on a few. And uh, 
I think John, you thought you even had a picture of uh, him with a saw cutting something. I, I do. Know, I know he's helped a lot with cleaning, uh, cleaning up and retrieving uh, trash and et cetera. There he well, is. Yeah, there he is. This was uh, in uh, May 15th, 2021, which okay. is when we went um, from Langdale Park down to Sugar Creek to what was then the Salty Snapper, now Berta's Kitchen. Right. And there were a lot of deadfalls we had to saw through. We, and yes, we got the mayor to saw on one of them. <laughs> There was also, and we have this nice snack down there. Bobby McKenzie organized that one. He's in, involved in a lot of these. Yes. Yeah, some of our regulars are Bobby McKenzie, Russell Allen McBride, Sean O'Connor, um, <laughs> Phil Royce from Live Oak, and a bunch of other people that I'm doubtless forgetting to mention. So, you know, this particular one was fun, but it sure illustrated that there was work to do. There's the mayor, 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 mayor. That's my saws always using. <laughs> and there was stuff like this where, um, well, we managed to saw through that one, but there was another one where there was no choice but to portage. Here's dragging Herb over the log I think that's Russell there in the front. Looks like Russell, yes. I think that's Jesse Cole in the back. Yeah, that's Jesse. And uh, Lindsay Phillips. Uh, so, yes, this one certainly illustrated there was more to be done. And um, the bottom picture of the screen looks like we're doing a drag here. Yeah, yeah, we were. That's actually a good time to get some of the lower items because you're not having to do them from a boat, which is a bit challenging. Well, we have a boat for that now. Um, the first thing we called a chainsaw cleanup was slightly later, also in May 2022, on the 29th. And... Um, Violating the first rule of presentations, never depend on the internet. <laughs> There's Phil sawing away. And um, we had, yeah, when we say chainsaw cleanup, you don't have to use a chainsaw. You can come along and pick up stuff, which here you can see people doing that. That's under the railroad bridge just downstream from Sugar Creek. We took all the trash to Treatville Boat Ramp where we have an agreement with Lowndes County to pick up the trash. Here's a typical log, log jam. You can see how, you know, something needs to be done about that. So we did. I believe that's right down from the railroad track. I think so. We have cataloged most of these and, you know, here's Phil trying to get a hernia. <laughs> You got some help, Jan Crissa, who actually lives in South Carolina, I believe. If you notice, I have a uh, brace on my leg. I was, uh, was, uh, I had a torn meniscus at that time. Uh, did doing this help? Probably not. Probably not. But Jan got it loose. And here's before we discovered how to use a trolling motor or ropes to hold the boat in place. But that boat, that's a bass fisher that we bought for this purpose. You can sit on the corner and change the ball and it won't turn over. Works very well. Is that my chainsaw? Uh, no, I believe that's my Husqvarna. That's a, that's a smaller one than yours. Okay. Well, it worked. Look at that. And you know that that's where you're doing exactly what I was saying. You're standing on the corner of the boat. So this is the first thing. There they are cleaning up. The 
this was the first thing we called a chainsaw outing, but it wasn't actually the first one. If I believe you recall, there were earlier ones. There was, um, there was a time that uh, Bobby McKenzie and myself and uh, Mr. Potter uh, went and did, did one from Langdale Park. And I guess we went downstream about a mile and cut several out on that particular day. Now that would be Dr. Potter, right? That's correct. Mm -hmm. So we'll figure out when that was and do something about it eventually. Here I am trying to push a log out of the way. That's also before we discovered bring a pry pole. Yes. We had a recent incident of that, didn't we? Yes, we did. We, um, it's kind of challenging when you're cutting something out suspended like that, and you don't know which way it's going to pinch. You don't know what's holding up what. So it's real easily to to get a, um, a saw hung in, in between. And we tried relentlessly to... Uh, get the uh, blade out and leave the leave the chain and the blade behind if necessary and we couldn't even do that so uh, we went back and got a i've got about a four foot uh, crowbar and we got that into the wedge and was able to open it up it worked really well so i'm sure that's going to be in our uh, our toolkit from this from going forward i think it should be I would show you that if my browser would cooperate. Ah, yes, this is why you always say never depend on the internet for a presentation. But we can talk about it. Next time I'll make slides. <laughs> <laughs> That's right or at least display from some local machine. Well, uh, anyway, that one was uh, pretty sure that was February 25th this year, which was the first time we used the 9.9 .9 horsepower outboard trolling motor and batteries that were bought by a generous grant from Wild Green Future, WGF. And they all worked great. They have. And, have so, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, here, maybe we can finally look at it. In the past, we've always depended on the uh, water level and the stream and our arm strength from our kayaks to get us point A to point B. But uh, most of these, we're going three or four miles total trip. And time you run a chainsaw for a while, your arm is kind of getting tired toward the end of the day. Oh, yeah. And with the 9.9 .9 horsepower um, here, uh, after mm, the saw decided to stay in a log. So while Phil went to get some ways to deal with that, I took the outboard downstream on the with the Coochie to see the $100 million deadfall. That's where the outfall of the with the Coochie wastewater treatment plant comes out. And I, uh, went even farther down to um a ball hmm. the ramp. That's right. And when we were planning the uh, the mayor and chairman's paddle, um, concerned about the current flow down the Little River because uh, you have to paddle upstream about three tenths of a mile to the takeout ramp. Mm -hmm. So uh, Paul Deloach had offered his ramp as a takeout uh, mm -hmm. downstream on the Withlacoochee, which would make it much, much easier for those who weren't up to the task of paddling. And I would say that water, the day of the mayor and chairman's paddle was probably running at about two mile an hour and it takes pretty good uh, arm strength to be able to overcome that it's nice if you're going downstream i always say the best way to kayak is to go with the flow 
Oh yeah. So uh, yeah, Paul was out there. He had a bunch of uh, hurricane deadfall on the route to his ramp. So he was out there cleaning it up as we went to look. As it turned out on the actual day of the mayor and chairman's battle, nobody went down there, but we sure do appreciate Paul making it possible. This was the mayor and chairman's battle. And um, even though we had done, at that point, 16 chainsaw cleanouts, plus the two that we haven't actually found the pictures of yet that Phil mentioned, on the day, during the mayor and chairman's battle, there's Phil sawing off at the crow deadfall, which Bobby McKenzie had sawed on the previous day, but the water had gone down, so it needed more sawing. And meanwhile, downstream, I was in the Walls John boat sawing more deadfalls downstream. So that makes the 17th cleanup. And the one we were just looking at, well, the one we looked at earlier, well, we haven't looked at it yet. Anyway, this made the, the uh, 17th cleanup. And uh, we're planning on more, aren't we, Phil? Oh, yes, yes. As the water level drops, we should be able to get a lot more of these uh, lower lying obstacles, such as the one I had to saw there. It was not exposed. We purposely had gone to that spot the week before, and as John said, on the day before, and still the water had dropped low enough to expose it. Now, water level would not be a problem today. It may be a little challenging for your alertness and uh, uh, paddling skills, but you know the, the water level fluctuates uh, quite a bit. Uh, from one day to the next, and definitely one week to the next. Oh, yeah, it's gone up four feet from yesterday to today after the big rain last night. Oh, yes. It's up in the minor flood at US 41 North Valdosta Road. Russell Allen McBride, here was a snake that was in this tree during the mayor and chairman's battle. Didn't bother anybody. You see, it made a nice paddle, and this was, um, uh, there's Lowndes County Chairman Bill Slaughter. Yes. And these are some landowners along the river. Phil wasn't on this one, but a few weeks earlier, when we went by there, we were sawing away at a big deadfall, and here comes the landowner in his four-wheeler with his wife, and he looked uh, not altogether pleased. But Russell got to talking to him, and if you know Russell, once Russell gets going, he's got the gift of gab. Um, and pretty soon the landowner realized that what we were doing was to his advantage. So they like us now, and three of the family came out to see us as we were paddling. No, I wasn't there. Gretchen took these pictures. That's Mary Beth Brownlee going under there with her daughter. She's the executive director of One Valdosta Lounge, an economic development well-being organization that's supposed to be working on Troopville Boat Ramp and Nature Park, as in coming up with <clears throat> funding for ongoing maintenance and such. That is Joe Brownlee, who is with Georgia Power. He provided, Georgia Power provided a grant that made uh, tickets to the mayor and chairman's paddle free for everybody. And we have received a check, by the way. It is in the bank. Okay. And that there is the Valdosta city manager, Richard Hardy, who had a boat that was too small. I don't know how many times he fell in and the seat was <clears throat> not working. Right. So he was not a happy camper. Yeah, he did not have a good day. Right. So it went much better than it would have. This is, uh, we're already down to the I-75 bridge. A lot of people got out at Sugar Creek. And I think this is people backed up waiting while you saw at the Crow's deadfall. Uh, yeah, quite possibly. Mm -hmm. And there you are. 
So if we had not done many of these before, there would have been a lot of delays like this along the way. In fact, uh, a lot of people would have been not altogether pleased. Meanwhile, okay. I had uh, taken the, the boat upstream. That's the border of the uh, Valdosta State Prison. Dead falls on a creek there. Uh, the thing about having an outboard is you can go places quickly, like you were saying. And there I was sawing off a deadfall downstream. And that's the 9.9 .9 horsepower outboard on the John boat. The outboard, once again, was due to a grant by Wild Green Future. The John boat was donated by Flint Riverkeeper, thanks to both. And that's my personal saw. The chainsaw, the 24 inch host Kavarna from Wild Green Futures in the boat in case I needed it. You know, those that, all those, uh, the, you're talking about the landowners, et cetera. Um, one of the fishermen that we encountered one of our earlier trips back in 2000, um, 2021, I believe it was, and we were cleaning up down at the Troopville area. And, uh, you know, you never know what people, how their reaction is going to be to seeing what we're doing. And he said, uh, you know, some of that log jam was so bad, I don't think fish were able to swim upstream through it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that it was that bad, but a couple of those that we cleaned up that Saturday were uh, pretty challenging. And fortunately, we had some good skilled people with us that day. It really made the task a lot easier. Yeah, a couple of points there. Uh, unless you really know what you're doing with a chainsaw, please do not try this at home. <laughs> Especially don't try the stuff you'll see. We have videos of Phil doing where he's like standing up in the boat, sawing over his head. Um. Don't try that unless you really know what you're doing. Well, I think you have a few of me standing on a log out suspended over the river as well. Oh, yeah. So this is one where with an incident such as you mentioned, um, that's just sawing over your head from your kayak. And dropping a limb on the kayak. Yeah, that's called doing a fill. <laughs> Phil does that a lot and you know one reason we're doing all this is um, these things accumulate trash that of course is a Zacadoos cup Zacadoos we find those everywhere there's less trash in the river than there used to be because um, there's now a few trash traps such as the water goat on Sugar Creek. We can show you that in a moment. This is where the sewer line crosses the Withfacuchi River. It's full of trash up in there. See, there's even a pesticide barrel in there. Oh, yeah. Um, so there's less of it than there used to be, but there's still some. There was going to be a cleanup by, led by Russell this Saturday, but uh, Russell has canceled it due to the river is in minor flood now. So there's a uh, Phil sitting on a log in the middle of the river, sawing off, and he got his saw stuck. So here's where he's using the Husqvarna 24 inch saw. Everything you want to use, of course, not quite working. Paid for by Wild Green Future. He got that loose and did some more sawing. And that's uh, Sean O'Connor in his boat. He has a pole saw that he uses to very good use overhead and in the water. You can see Phil cutting out some wedges, which I insisted on keeping to demonstrate why we really need a 24 inch chainsaw. That's 24 inches. So that's the chainsaw. That's 
the largest of the slivers. And that's not the only one. And there is what I was looking for. That's a landowner on the Withacoochee River in Wood Valley, and it's a na neighborhood in Valdosta. Remember when he showed up, Phil? Oh, yeah. I was uh, standing on a log, and I saw him coming in the background. Here's this big old husky guy, and he's, you know, and you, you can tell he spends a lot of time at the gym. And um, he come pretty hefty pace down the through his backyard and uh, I wasn't exactly sure what kind of individual we was going to encounter. And the whole time <laughs> I'm thinking, geez, I hope we don't have to fight this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Turned out he was a very nice, uh, pleasant individual and was very appreciative of the uh, work that we was doing. And didn't he also uh, kayak or have a canoe or something there on his property, John, that he probably <laughs> uses? He does, and he also said he had a chainsaw. What could he do? So I said, well, when the river goes down, you could clear out more of these upper limbs. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Last time I looked, he hadn't got to it yet. But when the river goes down again, maybe he will. Oh, yeah. He also asked how he could ask the or how he could help the organization. So I sent him a sponsored package for the Walls Gala, which will be September 27th at the Turner Center for Arts in Valdosta, with talks by, hmm, maybe Phil needs to talk about chainsaw cleanups. We'll see. Well, one and, of the uh, mm -hmm. things ahead. to note, too, the, all the individuals who have participated, this is not easy work. So they provide their time and their labor as mm -hmm. well as their equipment and the gas uh, to, to run said equipment. And uh, it's not easy. And so anytime anyone wants to come and help, there's just some manual things that people could do to help, just such as toss limbs out of the way to help us. So we appreciate any any assistance that we can get. And anyone can use a, uh, we usually have a, a Sawzall or something of that caliber. and. Uh, not doesn't require as high a skill level and everyone can help with those type of things that's right you do not have to use a chainsaw to participate so you know please show up you can do things like haul trash out phil royce came from live oak and hauled trash out and um we had a fellow come up from um ocala ocala florida to help he did this partly because of Valdosta's reputation for sewer spills and trash. I must say Valdosta's gotten better about sewage spills. They're smaller and less frequent, although nobody will be happy until there's none. But improvement is improvement, so we might as well say that. And uh, if you recall, the mayor stated that uh, his willingness to get involved in these type of things is what led to the formation of the mayor chairman's paddle. Yeah, the most recent one, he said one of his motivations was downstream counties in Florida were threatening to sue Valdosta because of the um, sewage spills. And he thinks that the mayor and chairman's battle helped convince them not to do that. I was on my best behavior, so, and, you know, it's a feel-good event, so I didn't mention that the real reason that the people downstream are not suing is, well, yes, that was a factor, but it's also, they don't have much money. The counties downstream have low populations, low budget, and it costs a lot to pay even a relatively inexpensive environmental attorney. One of the counties has actually retained one. And uh, those are the big reasons. There's right. still a lot of people not happy with Aldosta, I can tell you, but right now they're not suing. Well, I think as long as we continue to improve and keep them minimized, and like you say, no one is happy till there's none, but we have at least made uh, made progress. Yes. So here's another thing we need to remember. I think we got this one ingrained now. When you're doing a chainsaw outing. This one was on the Sewanee River from Griffiths Fish Camp, which is just downstream from the Okefenokee National Wildlife Refuge. 
oh, what is that? Uh, 14 miles, I think, to Fargo and all the little exclamation points in the triangles are where there were deadfalls. And these ones in particular, these four right in a row, they were pretty bad. One of them required forging and whenever you went by. So we went down to deal with them and it was fun. And we got as far as the first one. And well, somebody had already done this one. There were some places we had to go over. And uh, there's a bunch of places that you can, that are now owned by the Nature Conservancy, which we labeled and photographed. But uh, we got as far as the first, well, I guess uh, I've gone too far. You know, these things are fine. No, no, we haven't got there yet because Three Steps Landing is, it's just downstream of that. There used to be a house there, apparently. Yes. So there's a chimney. And that's a wild hog trap. Wild hogs are a big problem. Our water quality testing program has discovered wild hogs are one of the causes of E. coli contamination in the Withacoochee River. Now, I, you probably can't tell what we're looking at here. This is where we'd been sawing on a log and we'd sawed off one end of it towards the right bank there. And <clears throat> we'd been sawing in the middle with my 24 inch Husqvarna chainsaw. And that yellow thing in the middle of a river, that's my chainsaw. Yeah. It spent six months there in the it's submerged in the Sawani River. It's actually not good for chainsaws. No, they don't they don't like you after that. Yeah, well, uh, down at Goble Saw Shop, they got around to making an estimate for what it would take to fix that thing. And the answer was, uh, it would cost $450, a new one cost $600. So I did not get it fixed. I'm sure. But fortunately, Wild Green Future came along and wanted to make a grant, and we bought a 24-inch <laughs> Husqvarna chainsaw for walls. So that's what we're now using on walls cleanups for particular big, particularly big logs. And it does an excellent job. It's very good. It it takes a man to operate it, but it uh there's been several logs that we've cut that we needed that 24 inch saw. Oh yeah. We did go back and get it eventually. This is a different occasion. That was in December, wasn't it? Oh yeah, here we go. Oh, June, June, 2023. Yeah. yeah, yes it was. That sounds about right. Mm -hmm. Now we took multiple chainsaws this time, all working. It That's took uh, maybe 15 minutes to get my saw loose. Phil uh, just went and sawed another cut. The tree came loose. The saw came out. The saw now has a tattoo of tree rings on it. It does. Yeah. So I, I took it along to a recent meeting and said, nobody's got one like this. And everybody started chuckling. And I said, I guess nobody actually wants one. But I got one. Here's uh, an example of how this kind of thing goes. There's Phil sawing off that log we've just been talking about. That's me in the boat. Phil Royce and TJ on the shore.
Buyur. Dropped it without you getting under it. That's right. I was trying to stay out of the way. That's the old trolling motor that Walls owned. It works pretty well, except not very long. Um, this is another view of the same thing. We had multiple cameras, too. I think I took that one. <laughs> and here's an example of stuff you can do. Once you saw something loose, it's nice to get it out of the way. So there's a rope on that same log. And TJ, he did saw as well, but he's pulling the log out of the way. That's Shirley. She's photographing. That's very useful. If nobody takes pictures, did it happen? That's right. Goal number one achieved. Works. And we got three or four more of those. Even bigger ones. Two saws at once. Brief, I do occasionally chainsaw something. Three saws at once. This is also an example of something. One of our charter walls board members always notes whenever chainsaw cleanups come up, well, you know, those serve as habitat. But like Phil was saying, some of these things, I don't think even fish could get through. And we don't remove all deadfalls. We remove deadfalls that are blocking passage through the river. Often we don't even cut the whole tree out. We just cut wide enough for a reasonable sized boat. I think it was on this trip, there were some people coming upstream in a boat with an outboard who were very happy to see this going on because now they could get through. There's Phil Ross doing, don't try it at home. Isn't he the one that, that actually was in a family of circus performers? You know what? There is some connection there, possibly. I think so. He's certainly got balance. I mean, I've seen you climbing on stuff, but he's even worse. Yes, he is. Plus, he's younger than we are, too, John. I'm 29. <laughs> that's right. Mm. You know, TJ's got a saw, too, so that's one, two, three, uh, four people with saws. But once again, you do not have to have a chainsaw to come on these outings. And um, here's where we're using the rope to hold the boat close while TJ is sawing. And it's all stuck, how unusual. This was before we realized bring a pry bar. I don't know why I hadn't thought of that earlier. It, yeah, it, I don't know. It's yeah. pretty obvious. We did get that loose. I forget how. Yeah, we did get it. Well, that's one of the reasons I notch a lot, a lot more than I used to, I might add as well. Oh, yeah. Gives you a little more, a little more leverage room. Yet another thing bring a sharp chain <laughs> and a spare. Yes. I, I tend to like to use a chain till it hardly solves, but that's not what you want when you're doing this. <laughs> you're sawing firewood back at the ranch. I mean, fine. 
So all that stuff to the right of uh, Phil who's standing there, that's mostly still there. That's habitat. That's right. We got, I don't, I, I don't know if it's really hours of this stuff, but a lot. Yeah, Phil got his stuck, but I think we got that loose by, um, oh, uh, TJ brought a wedge. Always bring a wedge. We should make a list. Oh, yeah. Wedge and a hammer and a rope and a come along. <clears throat> Combination of the wedge and wiggling it, got it loose. So now you can go from Griffiths to Fargo and not have to worry about this. The water was just running out of that tree. It was a recent deadfall and it did not realize it was dead yet. This was kind of a major undertaking, wouldn't you say, Phil? Oh, it definitely was. But not many of them have been easy. You know, like I said, you always have a, an issue of uh, which way it's going to pinch. So you don't know if you need to cut uh, on top of it or below it. So you have mm -hmm. to make a couple of test cuts and just pay attention. And sometimes your reaction time is not what it needs to be. Yeah. Well, there's Phil's wedge in that one, too. I think that's his wedge, which is now stuck. <laughs> and standing in the water. And yes, she came along and helped out by pulling stuff out of the way and photographing. You do not have to chainsaw to come on these outings. Even if you do chainsaw, you can help pull stuff out of the way. All right, you probably don't need to look at uh, those things. Certainly don't need to watch a Lowndes County Commission meeting. So, right, we finally ended up, well, I see that's where we're starting. Okay, so yeah, there's more to do. Uh, for example, I'm gonna have to stop sharing for a moment. For example, on the mayor and chairman's battle, when the chairman took out at Sugar Creek, he noted that it was kind of difficult to get out there because there's one place where they had to actually portage over a log, which um, I pointed out, yeah, you would have had to portage more if uh, Phil and I had not sawed off the log that was above that log, log until uh, very recently. So um, as I told the chairman, we're gonna, correct me if I'm wrong, we're gonna go back whenever the water gets low enough and get that lower log too and some other stuff in the Withacoochee River. That's right. So there's that. There's also, there's plenty of the other places that have got um, place uh, deadfalls on the Alapaha River between Barron Beach and, and uh, Lakeland. There are three well-known deadfalls completely across the river. And if you want to do that using kayaks, that's all day. It's, I think, 14 miles. But now that we got the outboards, we can just zoom right up there and do them. Oh, yeah. Makes access much, much quicker. The um, 
trip we did with the 9.9, .9, there's no way we could have covered that amount of uh, of area in the in a kayak in a the whole day, let alone do the work that we did. Because uh, we went up twice, and it made it much, much more accessible. All right. Which is uh, actually a little bit of an issue. We have the 9.9 .9 and the 25 horse. The 25 horse, if we need to go fast, boy, howdy, it will do it. Locked it at 23 miles per hour upstream just last weekend. That's right. However, the 9.9 .9 has a feature of the 25 horse doesn't. With the 9.9, .9, if you hit something underwater, it will tilt up. Which is very useful, and you can tilt it back down later. So, the catch is the nine, the twenty-five horse is bolted to the John boat, so it's very hard to swap them out. So, if anybody has another John boat and trailer, they would like to donate to Walls Watershed Coalition, a five hundred one c three nonprofit. It is tax deductible, and it make you feel good to support this kind of work. That's right. So this is where Phil was cutting off the deadfall across Sugar Creek. Notice he did a lot of notching. It's and... not showing you, John. It's just you and I. Oh, yeah. Well, here, let me share the screen. Here you screen. Okay, so this is Phil. Cutting off that deadfall. Yeah. Notice he's doing a lot of notching. He cut off several pieces. Now what you can just see, well, you can't really see, but underneath this one, there's another one, which is the one the chairman was complaining about because the water went down and then the other one is exposed. That's the water goat on Sugar Creek that with Russell Allen McBride and relatives and friends of his cleaning it out, keeps a lot of trash out of with the Gucci River. There's another one on Two Mile Branch and there's a city built trash trap on a detention pond on Lee Street at One Mile Branch. So that helps, it needs to be one on Three Mile Branch and there needs to be a couple in the with the Gucci River. We'll see. That will happen eventually, I suppose. Right. So we could go on about this for a long time, but Phil's got, uh, you know, he's like works for a living and needs to <laughs> probably get back to work. So what do you think, Phil? Yes, yeah, kind of getting that time, John. Uh -huh. We could talk about some of this stuff for hours, I guess, if we wanted, but um, work does take priority occasionally. Right. Um, oh, I will just mention two other places that are chainsaw cleanup opportunities on the Little River upstream from Reed Bingham State Park. The top boat ramp at, Re at Reed Bingham State Park is Red Roberts Landing. Now, from there up to the next landing, somebody tried that downstream a few months ago, and there were so many deadfalls, they actually had to call 911 to get rescued. So we should do that sometime. Um, Sean and I discovered upstream on the Little River from Troopville Boat Ramp could use a little work. And we have a request from Florida. This could be our first ever Florida chainsaw cleanup on the Santa Fe River. Up on pretty far upstream there, there's a stretch that could use some work. So there's opportunities in addition to finishing up this stretch that we've been working on. So I sure do appreciate appreciate uh, Phil and Bobby McKenzie and Russell, uh, Alan McBride and uh, Phil Royce and uh, TJ and everybody else who's helped with this stuff. Because, you know, this is the nature of walls. People volunteer to do things. As Phil was saying, you know, they contribute their time, their equipment. And that's how it happens. 
It's not like I said, you guys got to do chainsaw outings. It doesn't work like that. Right. So I sure do appreciate it. Thanks again to Wild Green Future for the outboards and uh, the trolley motor and batteries. And to, um, I hope I mentioned the John boat was contributed by uh, Flint Riverkeeper. So thanks to all y'all and thanks to Georgia Power for keeping the chairman mayor's paddle free for tickets and um y'all come along on the next chainsaw paddle we don't know when it's going to be chainsaw cleanup it'll have to be a while to wait for the rivers to come down that's correct so what do you want to say to wrap up phil well i we're going to be doing some more because this is if you've never paddled this little stretch that we've been working on at the edge of town. It is a, a very convenient and quick and uh, easy um, paddle trip to do. And it has all the remote feel that you would experience if you were out in the middle of uh, a, a more remote area. But it's, uh, I think, a worthy effort. So anyone who's willing to come out and help us with any, any of these is uh, more than welcome. Even if you only take pictures uh, and etc it, it's an experience that you will have some tales to talk about sometimes <laughs> but we appreciate all the volunteers who've come out and helped us and uh, might also mention that we also have volunteers who uh, do water quality testing as well that's all done by their efforts to uh, go do these type of things so and and everyone does this out of their uh desire to help and ultimately uh, make a contribution and make the rivers better for everyone to enjoy. So John, it's been a, a interesting conversation to spend this time with you and I hope others who watch this video at a latter date can uh, uh, get some pointers and understand more about what we're doing on these uh, chainsaw cleanups. Okay, and you mentioned water quality testing. Uh, just look on walls.net, www.als.net, walls.net, or swaneeriverkeeper.org goes the same place. Look under the menu under issues and water quality testing. We could use more testers. We could always use more testers because we're trying to find out when the rivers are contaminated, when they're clean, and what people can do about it. And another advantage of these outboard motors See there, you can see water quality testing. Hope you can see that. Okay, another advantage of these outboard motors is we can now go places to do testing we couldn't get to before. That's correct, and find the hot spots that are causing the problems. That's right, we can just go upstream and find them or downstream. All right, so sure do appreciate it, Phil, and everybody else who's helped with the chainsaw, cleanups, the regular cleanups, the outings, the water quality testing, and everything else that Walls does. And join us next time for the next Walls webinar, and I hope to see you on the rivers. Bye, everyone. Bye now. <laughs>